Now, Bill, why is this segue to that? Can you read the objectives for Lisa's speech? Certainly. <clears throat> this is speech number one, the icebreaker. The objectives are to begin speaking before an audience and to discover speaking skills you already have and skills that need some attention. Time, four to six minutes. Terrific. So how appropriate to give an icebreaker on a day like today. Please welcome Lisa. <laughs> the United States. Oh, yeah. oh, perfect. Washington State, California, Texas, Florida. Excellent. And my art isn't too good. So <laughs> for my introduction, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about my family. I like to say that I've been traveling counterclockwise around the United States most of my life. <laughs> so I was born and raised in a small suburb of Seattle called Mercer Island, and I was a competitive runner. I was very competitive. I ran the quarter mile, and when I was 10 years old, I was one of the best runners in the state. By the time I was 12, I was good, but I was never that good again. So I like to think that I was over the hill by the time I was 12, <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least as a runner. So I was never that good again. The glory days was when I was 10 years old. <laughs> so then I moved counterclockwise in between 7th and 8th grade to Pasadena, California. And my summer job in high school was actually being an extra on Beverly Hills 90210. So you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I, was, I was one of the kids in the high school with Brandon and Brenda and Dylan. If you look back at the old episodes, you can see me on the show going back and forth in the crowd. It was the quintessential summer job. So that was my high school summer job. <laughs> then I went counterclockwise again to North Carolina, where I went to undergrad at Duke. And I double majored in public policy and economics. And I became a diehard college basketball fan. <laughs> I once camped out for two weeks to get into the Duke Carolina game, and I developed a bad cold, but at least we won the game. <laughs> so it was a success. I then went counterclockwise again to Washington, D.C., where I spent three years in between undergraduate and graduate school working for the PBS NewsHour with Jim Lair. And I had a very interesting job. I worked on the show interviewing authors of nonfiction books who were going to be on the show, so I got to meet a panoply of really interesting people. Sometimes at dinner parties, I often say, please pass the salt. Oh my goodness, I met Bill Gates. So it's something that I try to slip in there. <laughs> Very casually, but nonetheless try to slip in there. So I got to meet people the caliber of Bill Gates. So then I went counterclockwise again to Boston and enrolled in the Harvard Kennedy School and got my master's in public policy. And then I did not continue counterclockwise to the Arctic. <laughs> Instead, I stayed in Boston. So let me tell you a little bit about my family. My brother is two years older than me, and when he was 18, he was a competitive swimmer, and he tried out to be an ocean lifeguard in Los Angeles County. This was in the era of Baywatch. 
So tourists would come by and take pictures of him with his red bathing suit, with his blonde hair and blue eyes. And it was very funny because they would take pictures of him. And at the time, my parents very much wanted a doctor in the family, and I got squeamish at the sight of blood. <laughs> so my brother went away to medical school, but he was ever the free spirit. And after one year in medical school, he packed up a U-Haul truck and drove himself to New York and got a job in finance and worked his way up and did so well that he was able to retire at a very young age and move his family back to California to be near the ocean, which was his dream. So my parents never got a doctor in the family. <laughs> my father's an oceanographer, continuing on the ocean theme, but he's not an oceanographer like Jacques Cousteau. He doesn't scuba dive or swim with the slimy fish. He's a physical oceanographer. And this means he studies temperatures, currents, El Nino, global warming. He used to go out on ships when I was younger, and he grew a beard when he was out at sea. Now most of the oceanography is done via satellites, but he still has the beard. He now <laughs> works for NASA, so never trust an oceanographer without a beard. <laughs> <laughs> My mother met my father in Boston when he was a graduate student here. And they married right here at the MIT chapel. Ooh. Ooh. Very interesting. My mother is an uber stay-at-home mom and volunteer. She's a member of all the clubs and associate memberships. PTA president, educational foundation, um, Junior League, Assistance League, not the major leagues, but all the leagues. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very thankful that my travels have brought me to Boston, and now I've been part of a nonprofit that have led me to my career. My love of Duke basketball has expanded to the Boston Celtics, the Red Sox, and the New England Patriots. I love Tom Brady. <laughs> and I don't like hockey, but who knows, even the, my love for sports might take me to like the Bruins. Thank you, Madam Toastman. <laughs> breakers for you. Oh, thank you. I, I want to get your autograph at the break. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Toast.